BL Touch. This is your comprehensive guide to suit any 3D printer with a free step-by-step -step companion website. I've made many BL Touch guides before, but always for specific printers, and the trouble is they go out of date as Marlin evolves. So this guide is supported by a new page on my free website, which I can update in future to keep it accurate. It also makes for a convenient way for you to follow along when you're updating things like firmware. Let's start by looking at what a BL Touch is, why you might want one, and then work step by step through installation and setup. This is a BL Touch by Ant Clubs, and it's an auto bed leveling sensor. But what does that mean? Hopefully you know that a 3D printer's nozzle can move in a flat plane above the bed on the X and Y axes. So when we manually level the bed, our job is to get it parallel to that plane. What the BL Touch does is probe a grid on the bed, and at each location it's measuring the height, and with that data, it can build up a 3D map of the bed surface. So instead of the user adjusting the bed to be parallel, instead the movement of the printer will be altered to match the slope of the bed. This is convenient, but where ABL really shines is when the bed is warped, which no amount of manual leveling can fix. Again, auto bed leveling will adjust the path of the first layer to make it ride the contours of the bed, and that means on a warped bed, which mine is and I can clearly demonstrate by the readout on the dull gauge, I can achieve a perfect first layer, even printing over the entire surface of the bed. So what will this cost us? A genuine BL Touch will cost somewhere around 45 US dollars with the appropriate length extension cable. This cable is required to connect the BL Touch back to the main board, with most printers needing at least 1.5 meters in length. You will find cheaper deals around, but just pay attention to the length of the extension cable so you don't get caught out. A quick note on clones like the 3D Touch. Now personally I've never used one, but people seem to either swear by them or say they're rubbish. I think they're probably both right, and that means that the quality is a little bit questionable. So if you get one, you could find yourself a bargain, or you could find yourself in disaster and having to spend the money on a BL Touch anyway. The choice is yours. Let's assume you've got one or the other and proceed with the installation. To install the BL Touch, you're going to need a physical mount. There's a lot of printable mounts available on Thingiverse, and popular part cooling upgrade systems often have ABL mounts as well. These mounts typically work by attaching the BL Touch to them, and then attaching the mount to the 3D printer, and our aim here is to attach it as securely as possible to ensure that the results are accurate as well as repeatable. For this accuracy, we also need to pay attention to the height the BL Touch is mounted. There's a lot happening in this diagram, but it's pretty easy to miss this part here in red. And it tells you that from the tip of the hot end to the tip of the BL Touch, you need a distance between 2.3 to 4.3 millimeters. With the printer off, manually lower the nozzle until it's just touching the bed. A three millimeter Allen key is in the middle of this distance range, and you can see if it fits underneath. If it doesn't, you can adjust your BL Touch up or down if the mount is an adjustable type, if you're using a fixed mount and the BL Touch is too high, you can shim it downwards with washers, but this is pretty fiddly. And if your fixed mount positions the BL Touch too low, you're going to need to find and print a different mount. You now need to run your extension wire from the BL Touch back down to the main board, and at the minimum, you should be ensuring it can't snag on anything by cable tying it to the existing loom. Ideally, you'll use some sort of sleeving or cable wrap to completely contain it and keep it safe. At the other end, we have the job of attaching our BL Touch wiring to our main board. And on my website, I have a breakdown of what each of the five pins does, and an example of a wiring diagram. In summary, red, brown and yellow are used to control the BL Touch, with red and brown being 5V and ground, and yellow being signal. This signal is pulse width modulation, and that basically involves switching a logic signal on and off, and the ratio to which it's on and then off is called a duty cycle, and for a BL Touch, different duty cycles indicate different commands. Most modern mainboards have a dedicated port for these three pins. Here on an SKR version 1.3, we can see they're 5 volts, ground, and signal. However, when we line up the extension plug, we can see the order is different. On this Creality board, however, everything matches and the plug could go straight in. 
Never assume the order of the pins is correct, so always double check before you plug it in to avoid letting out the magic smoke. The black and white wires are for the BL touch to communicate when it's triggered back to the main board. Just like the Z-axis end stop we're replacing would when we're homing the printer. Because of this, we can plug in the black and white wires into your existing Z end stop port, pairing black with whatever is labelled ground. Some boards have a dedicated BL touch input for these. This will work just the same, but as you'll see later, requires a bit more firmware alteration. Let's address some frequently asked questions, such as, do I need a pin 27 board? Some older main boards, like the version 1 boards from Creality, had nowhere to plug in the BL touch, but there was one spare PWM pin that went to the buzzer in the LCD. The job of the pin 27 board was to plug in in the middle of the LCD and the main board, hijacking pin 27 to stop the buzzer from working, but making it available to control the BL touch. Any modern board, however, is going to have a dedicated BL touch or servo port spare, and that means a pin 27 board will not be required. What about if for whatever reason we can't use the inbuilt servo port? How can we find out if any of the other spare pins are suitable? We can look elsewhere on the board for spare pins. An obvious place to look might be the max end stop pins, and we can see from the diagram we have pin 128 and 126. We can Google the chip used on the main board and then go inside the data sheet. There'll be a section called pin description and then we come to pin 126 and we can see that it supports PWM whereas pin 128 is missing that from the description. So pin 126 would be the winner for the yellow wire. We're up to configuring the firmware and this is the scary part for a lot of people. Therefore, I've embedded on the page my guide to setting up software and preparing a base file and configuration for your 3D printer. No matter what your machine, these following firmware changes must be done. In configuration.h, we need to uncomment define BL touch. We need to uncomment auto bed leveling by linear and make sure it's the only one here uncommented. And we need to search for and uncomment Z safe homing as well. The next firmware change will be different depending on where you plugged in the black and white wires. If you plugged in these wires to your existing Z end stop, which is my preferred method and the one I generally show in my wiring diagrams. All you have to do is check that Zmin Probe uses Zmin end stop pin is uncommented and it should be by default. If instead you've chosen to use some sort of dedicated BL touch port, you need to uncomment Zmin Probe uses Zmin end stop pin, uncomment use probe for Z homing, look up the name of the pin that you're using and put it after Zmin Probe pin in this case for the Creality board, it's PB1. The following steps are optional, but are highly recommended. To have a dedicated menu for auto bed leveling, uncomment define LCD bed leveling. And for easy calibration later on, uncomment baby step Z probe offset and probe offset wizard. You can also input the X and Y offset of your probe in the firmware, but we can do this later on. So I consider this step optional. Compile and flash your firmware to the main board and we're ready to calibrate. Calibration involves telling the firmware the exact position of the BL touch relative to the nozzle and I have a dedicated video to this which I've embedded in the page. This video will take you through calculating your X and Y offset, different ways to measure it and how to format it and communicate it to the firmware. It will also explain that Z offset is the difference in height between the trigger point of the probe and the tip of the nozzle. It will show you how to use the inbuilt Marlin Z offset wizard to calculate this, as well as later on when you're printing, how to make fine adjustments on the fly. Everything should be ready to go, so let's talk about the actual BL touch operation. Now when you home the machine, X and Y will home first, followed by moving the probe to the center of the bed. For the first time you home, it's best to use your hand to trigger the probe, so if anything's wrong, you have time to cut the power before a collision. We are now ready to probe, but before this, we should bring the bed up to temperature so it can expand and take its final form. Now when we send a G29, I'll go to level bed from the LCD menu. The printer will move the BL touch around the bed, probing a 3x3 grid, creating a mesh that can be used for first layer compensation. Now that we know our BL touch is working, we actually have two options on how to use it when we're printing. The first option is slow, but is the most accurate, and that is opt to have the bed probed after homing at the start of every print 
with the generated ABL mesh immediately being used to compensate for the first layer. To achieve this, all we need to do is add G29, the line up to G28, in the start G code of our slicer. Some 3D printers, however, have a large bed and it takes a very long time to probe them. So to speed things up, you can bring the bed up to temperature, then use the LCD to probe the bed, and then immediately store the settings or send M500 to save the mesh to the EEPROM. Now in the start G code, once again after G28, add M420S1 to restore the mesh and apply it to the following print. Before we finish this guide, how about a little customization? By default, Marlin will probe a 3x3 grid of the bed, but if you have a larger format 3D printer, you might want to increase the resolution. This is really easy, we just increase grid max points X to a larger number. The probing speed of a BL touch with default settings is pretty slow, but this is another thing we can easily change. The firmware allows us to find a trade-off between speed and accuracy by changing both the XY speed in between probing points as well as vertical speed with homing feed rate Z. In this section, you'll also find a way to enable multiple passes per probing point with the average value being taken to go towards the mesh. You might notice from some of my footage that I've changed the position of the probing grid. Not only is it symmetrical rather than skewed to one side as is the default, but I've also included a bit of margin at the front and back to keep well within the bounds of the bed. This one's a little harder to find, but in configuration advanced, search for kinematic, uncomment the four lines, and specify exactly how far you want the probing grid from each side. Just make sure the margin you enter is larger than the probe offset, or you could have the nasty situation where your probe misses the bed. Hopefully that's everything you need to get the most out of your BL touch. In the case that you are experiencing problems, I have a link to a dedicated BL Touch troubleshooting page with common issues and their fixes. Remember that this video might become outdated in time, but the website should be updated to stay accurate, so use it as your primary resource. If you found this guide helpful, please let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.